Slog FPV. Today we're doing another abbreviated build. I'm very pleased about this build. Why I'm excited about it is it's going to be a sub 250 gram five inch build, not a toothpick. And it's a, a Tommy a design from Umagod. I think he's a very talented frame designer. I actually uh, have built some of his uh, designs. Here's an acro brat that I built up a couple years ago. And so here's the frame. Um, these are the, the, the spec motors. I got these from Umagod website. And then also um, picked up uh, several HQ props. These are the T5 mounted, T5 by uh, three HQ props. And then we I, uh, also picked up some thin um, battery pad Uma grip. And then um, also uh, this a micro AXE antenna to reduce the weight. And then, of course, I really like the Vista Nebula Pro uh, camera. It's uh, just as good as the original DJI camera. So I um, really like that. The flight controller is the recommended iFlight Beast. So this is a F7 flight controller, all in one, 45 amp rated. So it's a toothpick type controller. So uh, pretty interesting design there to reduce the weight. And then uh, Tommy had these uh, batteries uh, specifically um, designed by GNB. These are 380 milliamp hour 6S batteries, so they're pretty unique. Probably uh, you're going to be a little hard to find. Your, um, I got them off of Umagod, or Tommy's website, and they're 90C rated with an XT30 connector. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the frame set up and start to build. So here I'm partially assembled up the arms to the bottom plate, and then they have this mid plate. And uh, the screws you're going to want to use, they're these uh, gray colored screws, at least the color I got, um, are six millimeter. And then these brass colored screws are 10 millimeter. And uh, you can kind of see here how it is on the bottom. And these arms are interlocking like that. And so they basically slide into there and then you screw that in. I would uh, go ahead and use some Loctite and I wouldn't tighten these up too tight. This is, uh, they're aluminum screws, so be careful not to strip them out. I'm using the shorter standoff since I have the all-in-one flight controller. So I just wanted to show you, you know, how the thing went together and now I'm gonna put the other arms on. So this is what it looks like uh, assembled. The frame is very rigid, so the way it interlocks in here, I'm not getting any arm movement. So I just finished soldering on the pigtail as well as the low ESR capacitor and I added a buzzer. Doesn't add that much weight. This is a very small buzzer. I prefer those over using D-Shot Beacon. I'm gonna go ahead and put the flight controller on next. The all-in-one flight controller is now mounted. I just finished up wiring up the motors. You can see um, that it's a little tight soldering on the wires, but uh, it, it turned out good. And uh, so just be patient with that. It's pretty close to the FETs. So don't use, uh, try not to bridge any pads with solder. So um, I would use a higher, a little higher temperature on that. I have the Vista wire harness all soldered up. I went ahead and left it a little longer in case I, you know, want to use it in a different build. Sometimes what I'll do, I'll take, if I get tired of a build, I'll go ahead and use the component. So in this case, I'm gonna, it's a little longer. Yeah, it does add a little weight, but uh, in the end it makes it easier. And then if I ever want to repurpose this, I can. But uh, the wiring is, you know, pretty straightforward. Here's a picture of the wiring diagram here. Just as a tip, um, I used to struggle getting this uh, retaining clip um, situated. There's a little tab here on this right-hand side 
and uh, I saw something on Joshua Bardwell where he showed that an easier way to do this is undo this screw here on this retaining clip. Go ahead and there's a little tab on the other side of this bracket. So put that on first after you've unscrewed this uh, uh, retaining screw here. And then put this side on first and then loop it over and then put the, the screw back in on the left hand side here. And that worked out slick. Um, I used to really struggle trying to get this retaining clip on with that little tab getting that seated correctly. To mount the Vista unit, I went ahead and used some M2 by 16 millimeter uh, stack bolts that I had. The holes were already there. I know that uh, Tommy uh, stated that he just recommended using double-sided sticky tape with tie wraps. And he did do a crash test with that, but I had the uh, M2 by 16 millimeter uh, stack bolts anyways with some nuts. So I went ahead and did it that way. So it's a little fiddly, but the easiest way to get the camera mount on the front here is to put the inside plate on first. There's a couple of slots you can see on the top and the bottom, and then put the second piece on. Um, I wouldn't uh, make the screws that hold on the top plate loose so that you have some movement, and then it uh, goes in very easily. So next what I did, I just installed the standoffs and uh, used some Loctite on every bolt. These are aluminum, these uh, bolts, and so you don't want to tighten them up too much, so I would recommend using Loctite on the threads. Not a lot, just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and install some retaining bolts here on the right hand side. This is what the finished product looks like. It turned out really slick. I really like the color of the motors and the design. Uh, the frame I think is a very well thought out frame design. Not that difficult to put together. I would say the only fiddly piece was the um, camera mount but that was pretty easy just as long as you again put the inside plate on first then slide in the or slide in the second plate with the um, top plate screws loosened up um, I did add some Uma grip that came with the kit I set the camera angle at about uh, 20 degrees I run 20 to 25 degrees on my camera angle um, I went ahead and on this AXE uh, antenna. I went ahead and tie wrapped that in place. There's a slot in the back to hold it there. I um, went ahead and put on the battery strap, used a tie wrap on the um, pigtail for the battery so that if you eject your battery it's not going to rip off the uh, pigtail from the flight controller pads. I went ahead, I'll probably change it, it adds a little bit of weight, just some pads here on the bottom. Uh, probably end up printing out some TPU, some small TPU um, bumpers here to help out as uh, landing pads. I don't fly on concrete or anything, so it's not a big deal. Uh, so next, I'm going to go ahead and uh, Tommy on his uh, on Umagod's uh, YouTube channel, um, he has a video on the PID tune on this. So since I used... You know all the components that he had suggested i'm just going to go ahead and use that tune and try that for my maiden flight he does have rpm filtering turned on so i will do the same and uh so next i'll get a weight so the dry weight without a battery is 176 grams with the recommended 380 milliamp hour 6s battery we're coming in at 237 grams so we're well below the 250 gram mark with this 6s build pretty amazing for those of you who want to know whether or not you could run a insta 360 on this um, i think it you know it puts you over with the 6s version because uh, you're gonna have to have some sort of a tpu mount and with this battery and the props I'm coming in at 257 grams. I'm sure, you know, if I remove the, the pads on the bottom, you know, maybe a couple grams there, but making up for seven grams might be a little difficult. I could remove the buzzer, but it would be super, super tight. So I think if you're wanting to run like an Insta360, 
I think you're better off with the 4S version. Just as a side note, I know on uh, the Umagod and Company site, they show the battery strap um, where the battery orientation is sideways. I prefer this orientation. I mean, this battery is pretty square, so I don't think it's going to make a huge difference whether or not you orient the battery sideways or front to back. I like it front to back because I might want to use different size batteries like this 550 milliamp hour battery that's a, a 6S. So I, this is just my own personal preference. For those of you who are wondering whether or not Tommy's uh, Umagod company and store is legit, I would have to say that uh, so far they've been great. I actually emailed customer service, I had a question, and uh, they were very prompt at responding. I was part of the first batch uh, for the 250 frame, and um, they had forgot the battery strap, which wasn't a big deal, I have plenty of battery straps. But, you know, it's just to show how good they are as, a, as, as far as customer support. They went ahead and sent a first class mail with uh, batteries, two battery straps, so I greatly appreciate that. You know, it wouldn't have been a big deal, but they went the extra mile of sending me uh, the battery strap that was supposed to come with the kit. But again, the kit was very complete. So again, two thumbs up to Tommy and Umagod Company. I think it's uh, a good place to buy things. Overall, I give this build two thumbs up. It was, uh, if you start with the frame, I think the, the frame, again, the design was really well thought out. Easy to easy to put together, uh, you know the uh, components uh, on this. Uh, I thought, you know, the all-in-one flight controller, the iFlight Beast. Uh, it's a good flight controller. It's uh, the pads on it are a little tight, so for a beginner, I'm not sure that uh, they might have some difficulty soldering on some of the the wires to the like the motor wires uh, to the pads. But it's 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 definitely doable. I was running my um, soldering iron about 400 degrees, um, and other than that, since I'm not using Crossfire, I'm going to be using the DJI um, RC transmitter. I'll go ahead, and that made it a little lighter without having to add that. So I'm uh, really pleased with this build. Of course, uh, the camera on here, I've already... The Nebula Pro, I really like that. It's, uh, in my mind, it's every bit as good as the original DJI camera. I know some people still like the DJI camera better, but for me, um, I I like the uh, Nebula Pro colors. Turns out really, um, you know, I can still color grade it. So overall, um, I give this uh, build two thumbs up. And so my next video, we'll take it out for a maiden flight once the snow melts around here. So as always, thanks for watching my channel.